Oh, it's it's embarrassing. I look like I look like an idiot. I, I wanted to create a movement, and I did create a, a, a movement. It's like it comes across as like bullshit, like scammy, which I get. Hi guys, it's Madison back in my blue kitchen for another crazy video. And if you like deep dives and like to analyze scams and other crazy things going on on the internet, chances are you'll probably like this channel. So don't forget to subscribe and also give a thumbs up on this video if you want to boost this video. And well, let's get into it. Jake Paul is one of the internet's favorite dumping grounds with so many videos all on his problematic behavior. And I thought, why not add into the mix, right? Like what's another one out of the thousands of videos on Jake Paul? I'm kidding. I wanted to highlight a more under talked about aspect of Jake Paul and his career. I wanted to talk about the companies, the business deals and the investors that collectively make up much of Jake Paul's career and success, as well as all of his failures. Jake Paul has an obsession with being a business guru, but at the end of the day, he's kind of just another failed free bot. Before we get into the video, I thought to put us in the right, you know, millionaire mindset, really like jumping into the mind of Jake Paul, I thought we'd read his inspiring tweets. This has been by far the biggest year of growth for me. I've already learned so much about myself that I never knew. It's okay to not have all the answers. It's okay to fail. It's okay to change who you are. It's okay to not be right. Be patient, great things are coming. I love depleting my serotonin and then getting tons of anxiety. When I'm sober, I still need some sort of stimulant. So I'm always walking up to my friends and whispering, Let's do coffee and see what happens. I was Lil Wayne's biggest fan. I was nine years old watching Lil Wayne's documentary where he was doing Molly and yeah, and going crazy. Don't blame me, blame my role model, LOL. Happiness is greater than money. Everyone at the club after quarantine gonna have to wear masks. It's already dark in the club, but masks? I know one of the homies is gonna smash a six on accident. A new day to imagine, a new day to create, a new day to live, we're blessed. Breakfast for dinner is equivalent to morning sex. Someone comments, 12 year olds know your audience, Jake, which we'll get into. Whoop whoop, whoop whoop. Your channel is poop poop. I overthink to the point where I'm thinking about not overthinking, but still can't stop overthinking. And so I literally just end up overthinking, overthinking. Y'all worried about toilet paper running out, but I don't need to wipe my ass because I don't let shit bother me. Amazing. Incredible. Truly the visionary of the millennials that we all needed. We didn't know we needed him, but we need him. In the nicest way possible, I want to preface this video by saying that the best way to describe Jake Paul and all of his successes and all of his failures is that Jake Paul is a stupid genius. I've thought of a nice way of saying that, but I really can't think of one. You look at the way that Jake Paul has made a name for himself on the internet, and you can't help but wonder, is he as stupid as he's making himself appear? Or is he behind the scenes some sort of brilliant business magnate? I don't know why I have a mental block with that word. Magnate. Magnate. Is he some sort of business magnet? <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that who is hyper aware of the inner workings of social media. And as this video will better describe, yes and no. So let's analyze business wise, what's really going on with Jake Paul. First, let's talk about Team 10, one of the biggest sources of confusion for me on the internet. But if you don't know what Team 10 was, I'll have Jake Paul explain it here. The power of a team is so big, it's unreal. Imagine taking 
Kanye West, Drake, LeBron James, Rihanna, Kylie Jenner, and having them all promote something. That would be insane. But we as social media influencers, everyone that comes to this house, everyone on the team, we are those people to our fans. So when we get put together, these people move. You just have to know how to make them move. Team 10, as well as seemingly Jake Paul's other businesses, are all under the company Team Dom, which we'll get more into later in the video, but all you have to know about Team Dom is that it's categorized as a media company, and in 2017, it raised 1 million in capital. That means that Team 10 actually had a lot more voices than just Jake Paul, and wasn't just some like spontaneous influencer group, like they made it appear. The supposed plan for Team 10 was all about taking social media stars with talent and potential, and exposing them to a larger audience, to grow their following, and then subsequently monetize that following. I definitely understand where that idea is coming from. Influencer marketing is still a very new industry with a lot of players involved, and it seems like Team 10's idea was to control and monetize every single aspect of influencers and influencer marketing. Kind of like saw the value in influencers and like how much power we had and like I realized with this much power, why don't I create own the pie uh, instead of promoting someone else's pie. Jake Paul continuously called Team 10 an incubator for social media talent. We are like a business incubation company. You know, you've heard of Y Combinator and, and things like that, but we do that for talent. But as someone who's kind of been a part of the tech startup world where incubators are a popular channel to grow a budding startup. I feel like he either completely misunderstands what incubators are, like maybe he stumbled across a video of Y Combinator and was like, I'm gonna do that. Or he's purposefully mislabeling Team 10 as an incubator instead of what it really is, a very shitty talent management company. When Team 10 first launched, not much about the contracts was known, but eventually it came out that Jake Paul was giving these young, impressionable, small influencers absolutely terrible contracts. Sign a five-year contract that gives him a 20% commission on everything you make. You and Jake are good friends, and you believe in him, so you sign it. We also find it a little concerning that everyone is locked into a five-year contract. The Team 10 members are all young, and they'll obviously do whatever it takes to reach the same levels of success as Jay. Which is unfortunately a common practice in the entertainment industry that just grinds my gears. When I look at the contracts of Team 10, they were really crummy contracts, but I have to wonder if other investors were involved in it because I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I kind of doubt that Jake Paul was the only one involved in creating these influencer contracts. In fact, I highly doubt it. Also, surprise, surprise, it's extremely challenging to control every aspect of someone's social media fame, influence, and sponsorships when real people are involved, and especially when you are treating those real people terribly. So then we move into the Team 10 house, and he creates these rules for everyone. If you're not up by 10 a.m. filming, then like you get fined $50, and like you have to pay $50. Like no alcohol at the house, or you get fined $500. No smoking. Every single guest that you had over had to be approved by Jake. You do not treat someone like that. So whatever. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> when you, as a talent management company, because let's be real, that's what it is, prioritizes profit over the well-being of your talent that you're supposedly nurturing, well, that talent suddenly isn't excited to churn out content for you anymore. So Team 10 was a massive that's failure a that just flopped every single time they tried to do something with it. What's what's going on with Team 10? Why did Team 10 not work? 
I, w- I started the company at 18 years old. I had no idea what I was getting myself into from a business standpoint. It was the very first business I created. What people saw with Team 10 was Jake Paul learning how to create business and do business. There was just so much going on that I couldn't control everything. And like I, when I tried to like hire people in to like help out, they just weren't the right people. They didn't maybe know how to build the business better, any better than I did. And it just wasn't the right business team surrounding the talent and eventually every single member left they went through this really high turnover rate of just going through talent and talent until eventually every single member left of course team 10 in the process ended up garnishing fame and notoriety but i'm not sure if it was in the way that they intended Tonight, residents in a West Hollywood neighborhood are angry. They say they've had enough of the chaos created by a social media star known for his crazy antics. That man, Jake Paul, has a uh, has eight and a half million followers on YouTube. His neighbors, though, say that he's been filming dangerous stunts and he's putting people in danger. Now, it's no secret that Jake intentionally targets a younger based audience, a.k.a. a child audience. They're marketing to kids extremely aggressively. There's some legitimate brainwashing going on. It's very predatory on these kids and they're selling like garbage. Which is especially problematic as his content has developed over the years and he's increasingly pushed out more and more inappropriate content. Who is your audience? Who do you make your videos for? Yeah, my audience is uh, is definitely younger. It's like 8 years old to like 16 years old. Who is your average Jake Pauler? An 8 to 18 year old. Notice how the wording here is don't watch this with your parents, not don't watch this with your kids. Who is your audience? Who do you make your videos for? Yeah, my audience is uh, is definitely younger. And that's definitely problematic in its own right. But also on top of that, as discussed in my whole family vlogger video, laws and regulations regarding children's content on YouTube and content with children in them on YouTube are virtually non-existent influencers that target and make videos directed at children use shady tactics that aren't acceptable in traditional media to target and sell to young impressionable children on YouTube. And Jake Paul is no stranger to this. The tactics he uses to sell or shill his merch on his channel is just so wrong when you realize that children are watching. It's just like, bye that. Merch. <laughs> <Buy> that. <laughs> is that Jake Paul merch? Buy that merch. Hey. Especially in the past, most of his vlog was basically just a commercial to sell his own merch. Five hundred dollars. The second prize winner is going to win two hundred fifty dollars. Just go to fanjoy.com backslash Jake Paul. Enter the contest, guys. Get yourself some of the hottest merch. Whole entire life is basically turning into a tour. My life is becoming a tour. Everything I do, man, I'm just too. I'm I'm a tour. 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 The merch store. Bring it, merch store. Tour merch. As you can see, there's some tour merch inside of there. So if you guys come on tour, get your tickets in the description. If you guys come on tour, you're going to be able to get some exclusive merch that is only available on tour. The new merch on, it's the new drop. Yo, check out the shorts too. And I remember reading somewhere that traditional media outlets that make content for children are only allowed to have a certain amount of advertising content within a show or segment, but that law just isn't a thing on YouTube. I mean, if you want to become a respectable business person, the way to do it is not through hustling children. It's like stealing candy from a baby. It's really not an admirable feat and is pretty universally frowned upon. Yet you can see from Jake Paul's old business mindset videos on his Jake Paul biz YouTube channel that he really thinks he's doing something here and is quite honestly obsessed with becoming a get rich quick scheme millionaire mindset business freebot guru. It's not bragging if you can back it up. So having a vision in life is like super, super important and can help you obtain your goals and reach for higher things. Uh, and this is why. I'm currently here next to a Bugatti. Here in my garage. Because it's always been a vision of mine to own a Bugatti. I always say to myself, Jake, you will have a Bugatti. Jake, you will, you know, 
drive your kids around in a Bugatti. You're gonna go 150 miles per hour in a Bugatti. Cringe. <laughs> the last business of Jake Paul's that we'll talk about is probably the saddest get rich quick scheme out there and that is Edfluence. Edfluence is like a Ty Lopez here in my garage fake money business guru course except for once again it's targeting children. So Edfluence just like Team 10 completely failed but not before some hilarious Ty Lopez-esque content. Edfluence. Edfluence is a course that you guys can take right now online how to do social media secrets, tips, tricks, how to be a YouTuber, how to grow your channel, all things that have taken me years to master. You could even potentially be able to join Team 10 if you take this course. So if you think you have what it takes, guys, go to edfluence.com right now. Oh, you're what, Mom? You're watching this Edfluence course? Oh my gosh, you're blowing up, Mom? Oh my gosh, yeah, I know, because everything in this course is right. You should follow it. Click. <clears throat> Why? I missed a huge part in this whole segment of the video about Edfluence, but after Edfluence and that whole thing kind of failed, Jake Paul started up Demeanor, which Drew Gooden covered, and it's kind of seems to be this attempt to do Team 10 digitally. Demeanor is a platform for influencers to make and sell their dream products. Tell us your vision and we'll make it happen. All right, sounds legit. Low upfront costs, so there's a small setup fee, but don't worry, then we won't charge you another cent until your products are selling. From courses to purses to games to watches, we'll make it happen. You just need a vision and a fan base. So demeanor seems to have failed as well, although there's really not a ton of information on demeanor itself. So after that, Jake Paul started the financial freedom movement. Isn't that just the perfect name? Financial freedom is like the ultimate get rich quick guru free bot scammer phrase. Learn from me and a dozen other experts and millionaires on how to break free from the normal nine to five and live life on your terms by achieving financial freedom. And it's just so funny too because he still has a majority young audience where I don't even know if they can fully conceptualize what financial freedom is. Like I just don't think children wake up in the morning and they're like my life goal is to achieve financial freedom. There's over $1 trillion in student loan debt and people with outdated education who can't even get a job. We need a movement that inspires people to live life on their terms, not someone else. A movement that anyone who's- Hey, rich cars, expensive. Becoming financially free from the societal cookie cutter nine to five jobs we are all told to have. Our future is in our hands. Are you with me? I'm okay, thank you though. Okay, so monthly access to FFM with Jake Paul, Regular $40, now 50%. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Quit your job and fire your boss. Or quit school because you've been lied to. The system is broken. Ask yourself, why are there teenagers making millions of dollars and broke 40 and 50 year olds? This whole course is still up. It's basically the new and improved Edfluence after Edfluence failed. It's still really similar to Edfluence. My interpretation of all of these online scam scheme sites, Edfluence, Demeanor, Financial Freedom Movement, I do think that they're a desperate attempt from Jake Paul to make a failing business concept work. But it's just not working and he refuses to see that it's not working. Jake Paul somehow manages to create even more cringy business guru content than Ty Lopez. Somehow. I think he is pointing out a very obvious problem in our education system. The way that Jake Paul talks about it is not eloquent at all. I, w I wanted to create a movement and I did create a, a, a movement and I'm still going to push the movement that would help those kids in school that were like me, that like didn't know what they wanted. They didn't want to go to college, but they wanted more. They wanted to learn yeah. something. They didn't want to sit in class and like learn about like science. And the way the financial freedom movement comes across to the internet is like drop out right now. 
quit your fucking job. Yeah. And it's stupid. Like the way we launched it was awful. It comes across as like bullshit, like scammy, which I get. It's your side hustle until it yeah. becomes your main hustle. I think people are so stressed and have so much hate in them and are jealous and have anxiety because they have so much shit to worry about and are stressed about money or what they're doing in their yeah. lives. And so if I, if I can get 10 kids to become financially free because of this, I'm happy. And I think people are like, oh, you're, you're wanting people to come financially free, but then you're asking them to pay you $19 a month. You're a scam artist. And like, yeah. I see that. I like, I get how that, how it comes across as that. But to me, the way I see it is if you are online and you are wanting to do something and you're a young kid and you're looking for handouts and you want everything to come to you and you're not willing to like work yeah. for it or invest into your future, then I don't like, I don't like, th those are the people we don't want. School dumb, school dumb, me no like school, be smart, Lambo, <laughs> mansion. The whole site was just about convincing his child audience and fans that looked up to him that they could reach the same level of success that he did just by paying him money. Jake Paul claimed that the site was bombarded by aspiring social media influencers eager to purchase his course, which is concerning, but the actual reality was much funnier. Let's go to the training center. Okay, so they got a lot of different courses and videos on here. Okay, you'll notice that uh, you can like these videos, but none of them have likes. <laughs> Most people, even his child audience, actually saw through the site. So, in Jake Paul's influence video, he talks about how he invested in 15 startups. I, I have, I'm a, I have equity in a bunch, of like 15 different companies. When researching Jake Paul's investments and his investors, I found the information really fascinating and was surprised that not that many people on YouTube talked about it or at least dove really deep into the subject. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So let's talk about Team Dom and TGZ Capital. Team Dom was the company that I mentioned earlier that's basically the parent company under which is all of Jake Paul's business ventures, AKA business schemes. But by far the most interesting thing about Team Dom is that in 2017, Team Dom raised 1 million and the investors of Team Dom are really, really interesting. The round was led by Chinese investment firm Dan Hua and also included Edward Lando, Abe Burns, Adam Zaplane, and Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, Gary V. You know, anybody who doesn't realize that every single human being in America, 14 to 24, only lives in their phone and only watches on three or four or five of these platforms is gravely mistaken. Brands who aren't doing social media marketing are missing the whole entire Gen Z and millennial generation. For me, what's really cool about Team Dumb, what you guys are doing, is that I'm a big fan of scratching your own itch. Here's what I mean by that. You are influencers, you grew up in it, you've tasted it, this is not your first day or first rodeo, you understand it from the content production side, and you've worked with a lot of brands at this point. So then creating a halo effect of developing talent, knowing what to look for, you're always better at finding talent when you've done it yourself. So Gary V is one of the investors behind Team Dom and everything it includes. This is especially weird for me because if you didn't see that Freebot video, it's a long video, but I dive into a lot of the get rich quick gurus or millionaire mindset gurus on social media. And at the very end, I cover Gary V. And so people really went for me when I mentioned Gary V in that. They're like, no, he's amazing. You don't even understand. You know nothing about him. He's so successful. He cares about his fans. He doesn't want to just sell you a course. He's not a scammer. And I'm not saying he's a scammer, but he invested in Team Dom and he's aligning himself with Jake Paul. So what do you think his interest is? So for a lot of you, Jake and his brother were big breakout stars on Vine. When, you know, when did you uh, start, when did you know that there was something going on and what? I wasn't 
creating content like consistently, um, I didn't realize how important that was. Huge. It's a huge problem. So I wish I would have done that the whole entire way. Let me do a recall to my early days of influencer. I actually struggled to talk about my mistakes. It's like one of the weird things about me and it's like, like it, it's probably a very flawed thing but I actually, as you were talking, re- reminded myself of one. No quill over the long term value of the awareness and the branding. So that's something, you know, that battle of short and long term is huge. It's a huge problem. Please don't come for me. I just try to say how I feel. So Team Dom raised one million in a seed round and then it doesn't look like they've raised any more capital after that. Usually if you raise money for your company, though it doesn't always have to look this way. Usually if you raise a seed round, budding startups go on to raise a series A, a series B, a series C, and so on until they reach their eventual exit strategy. Whether that's to make the company public or to get acquired, those are usually the two exit strategies. Buy my business course to learn more. Just kidding. So what's really interesting is Team Dom doesn't look like they want to do any of that and I'm not really sure what the plan is or was with Team Dom and why they even needed to raise startup capital in the first place. Was it for the mansions and the cars to make Jake Paul and those around him look much more rich than they are? The 1 million number just really confuses me. Of course, Team Dom could have this like rock solid plan and they're right on track and they're doing totally fine with just the startup capital that they raised, but I'm not really sure if that's the case. Looking at the business moves that Team Dom has made, like Team 10, which failed, Edfluence, which failed, And I wonder if the company itself has failed to meet the expectations of their investors. In fact, the smartest thing that I think Jake Paul has done in all of this, in my opinion, is swindle all of these investors who were so fascinated with social media and the younger generation. And of course, I have to note, similarly to Team 10 and Edfluence, Team Dom, the site is completely down. It's not there anymore, so it looks like Team Dom isn't even really in existence anymore. And the very last aspect of this entire picture is TGZ Capital, though there really isn't much to discuss. TGZ Capital is an influencer venture firm funded by Jake Paul and Cameron Dallas, which was a complete surprise to me. TGZ Capital was supposed to act as a VC arm of Team Dom. The description for TGZ Capital is that it provides portfolio companies with capital as well as exposure to larger audiences and helping them run their social media strategy. So it seems like the plan was to invest in companies, then have Team 10 members promote the companies that Jake Paul and Team TGZ Capital invested in, and to cash in at both ends, profiting from both the success of the companies and the influencers. Not only is the whole thing pretty shady, trying to control businesses, sponsorships with influencers and the influencers themselves, but Team 10 failed and it seems like TGZ Capital failed. So I don't think any of these plans actually succeeded. Yet Jake Paul is claiming to his fans that he's some sort of social media business guru. What's up Jake Paul, Biz back at you again. Um, And today, based off of the title that you read, I'm going to be talking about how I raised $1 million for my company at 19 years old. At the end of the day, I can see why Jake Paul would be so interested in the growing importance and business interactions on social media. So unfortunately, I think Jake Paul is a stupid genius who had the right idea but the wrong execution and is now a failed business guru. But what do I know? He's still obviously much richer than I am. (laughs) 